All right, so these are some of my top travel tips if you decide to travel to El Trunco. These are my five tips that if it's your first time coming, um, things that I kind of wish I knew, but I think you should know if you're going to be traveling here. So the first tip is to actually know what El Tunco is and what it looks like. Um, the reason why I say that is because I don't want you to expect something different than what it is. So it is, you know, it has a reputation of say being a party town, meaning that at night they're backpackers, you know, they want to have a drink. It's a little bit more noisy. If you're here with a family, I'd recommend staying a little bit more away from the noise or if you're not looking for that kind of thing just something to be in mind of um, the second thing that you know being aware of this type of environment is that it is very safe um, from everyone I've talked to they said the Limita district and El Junco is a very very safe place so you're not really gonna have to worry as much about um, you know things that might be dangerous I have my camera out as you can see you know people know who the Americans and the tourists are so it's not like you know it's not like um, it's a mystery and finally I'll say that when you are thinking of visiting here this entire stretch of town this entire beach is a black sand beach so what does that mean well a black sand beach the waves are a little bit more aggressive which is why it's great for surfers um, it's not going to be the traditional white sand beach that you might find you, know, you might think of if you're say in like North America but um, if you are coming here for surfing you're coming here and you want to enjoy the waves that's something to be aware of I haven't seen terribly many swimmers you know, there are swimmers out there that are enjoying the water but the entire beach is also laid with rocks so it's not going to be the the best uh, environment if you do just want to chill on the beach which is why I recommend Costa del Sol if you do want to go to more of like a white sand beach and enjoy that kind of a, a lifestyle there you know lay out in the sun these different things you can do that in El Tunco I just say it wouldn't be you know, the best place now the other thing about El Tunco is that it's very tourist heavy in that there are lots of restaurants lots of bars lots of shops that are catered to the people that come here from France from Holland from Canada and the United States so when you're coming here and you know you, you, you come here on a day that is not Friday or Saturday I would say the second tip is to be aware of your timing so if you're looking for the party lifestyle you're looking to actually go out there and like go to bars and, and you network and you know well, I guess not network but like mingle with different travelers and such um, the best days are going to be on Friday and Saturday if you come here on a day that's not that it's gonna be you know pretty empty with the bars you have like you know music that's blasting and that's cool but it's, it's not gonna be the same popularity it's not gonna have the same number of people out there if you don't come on Friday or Saturday Friday or Saturday the locals sort of pile into this town so you're gonna have more in the way of things to do when it comes to that now my next travel tip is if you are traveling here alone or even if you're going with one other person or you know you just meet a bunch of people in your hostel and that's kind of who you're hanging out with I really urge you to try to be a little bit social when you're here it doesn't have to be you know some big concerted effort but just simply like saying hi to people and exchanging a few words hola um, you know where are you from just being you know having a little bit of conversation skills is going to make it so that you have a much better time when you're here particularly at night when I was at the bars you know just striking up a conversation with the dude I ended up meeting someone who actually is from Chalatenango and he lives in New York and we got to talking he was telling me all about the history of the place he was also telling me about how if I actually wanted help finding my mother he knows many people in the town that I grew up in so you never know who you're gonna meet you never know what kind of tips you're gonna get where people are gonna tell you hidden gems to go to so be a little bit open you don't be too closed off I found that when it particularly comes to like the Spanish people here um, you know shop owners they're initially a little bit closed off but once I started to talk to them I just kept asking them questions they started to open up a little bit and they can tell you some cool stuff about their life and you'll notice that really all they are doing is just like they're in their job and, and um, you know there's kind of living here and, and you know seeing all these different tourists and it can kind of get I think a bit autopilot for them but when they I do start to talk to them and start to ask them more and more questions they begin to open up um, and just kind of like a, it makes your trip better that you get to meet all these cool people now my fourth travel tip for you is basically in, in the way of transportation so how do you get around here 
Um, I think the most common way is to rent a car. There's really cheap parking. It's like two or three dollars. You can go to different beaches in the area. You can go if you want to to Costa del Sol, as I mentioned before. Um, you can really go around the area when you have a car. Now me, I'm only here for two days, full days. And um, I'm then traveling to Santa Ana where I'm there for like a handful of days and then these other places for a handful of days. So I didn't really see the value for me in renting a car. Um, if I wanted to, I guess I could have, but I just think it's more of a hassle. And I didn't know how readily available the parking was. I've heard some horror stories online. You know, obviously that might be a little bit of media bias there, but people being ripped off or people you know, having a big um, deposit or surcharge based on where they rent it. So I don't know, I just, I didn't really decide to rent a car, but that is probably the primary way I see people getting around here. Aside from that, you're gonna to have to rent a taxi to go from one town to the other, probably like an hour. I'd say you're gonna be paying, you know, 30 to $40. I went from um, 10 o'clock a.m., or uh, sorry, 11 o'clock until four o'clock-ish in the evening. And the taxi driver had to wait there when I went to Costa del Sol. That cost me about $60. So it gives you a little bit of idea. Tomorrow I'm going to um, Santa Ana. That's costing me $45. So it kind of gives you an idea of like the pricing here if you are looking to hire a taxi um, and you're not looking to do something like renting a car or going through the hassle of that. Now my final tip is if you're visiting El Tunco or you're visiting El Salvador in general, go out there and share your own information. You know, whether it's a blog post, whether it's a YouTube video, what are the things that you like about El Tunco? What are the things that you don't like? How should they prepare better? If you haven't already, I urge you, you're thinking of traveling, start a vlog. You know, start a very simple blog if you want to, if you're more of a writer type. Um, I think that's the only way that the overall media perception is gonna change when it comes to El Salvador. I mean, you can go back into my YouTube videos, you can actually see me thinking that El Salvador is this scary, crazy place um, with lots of criminals and gangs, etc. And while that is true of like certain portions of El Salvador, you know, there are great areas like this that are completely safe, that are, it's okay if you're an American to travel about, that are not dangerous. So it's important that particularly if you are in America, we begin to change the image that people have around El Salvador so we can get some more tourism. Um, and I think that's gonna be better all around for everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this YouTube video. If you are interested in starting a blog, that's actually what I do full time for my living. So I started blogging in 2012. Um, ever since then, I also put out books on my subject. That's the topic of my blog. I have a YouTube channel, I have my podcast. It's very possible if you want to, to start a blog and do it full time. You can actually make it your full time income, you can work from home, you can travel like I do, and you can have everything operating behind the scenes. So it's a very new lifestyle, but it is something that's available to you if you're more looking for kind of like being able to travel and being able to do what you want with your time, particularly being your own boss. I will include a link down below where you can check out my guide. It's a free guide on how to start your blog quickly. It takes just a few steps. You can get up and running in 15 minutes and then you can start to share your message, your voice, and your journey with the world.